Hello and welcome to Jewellery Rescue. I'm Kat and I'm a girl on a mission to rescue and recycle the world's unwanted jewellery. Today we're going to be looking through some of my recent car boot and charity shop finds. There's a few weeks worth here because it's been the summer holidays and I haven't had time to catch you up on it all. So I can't wait to dive through and maybe remember some pieces that I'd forgotten along the way. If you like what you see, please don't forget to like and subscribe below and hit that bell so that you're notified of my future videos. Let's have a look. So these were car boot purchases. I can't quite remember how much I paid for this one. I think it was in a bundle of things, probably sort of 20p, 50p, nothing special. Um, just a nice costume piece. These fabulous 80s earrings are clip-ons and they're suede and leather. Um, I'm still deciding, but I did wonder if I might turn the nicer one into a pendant. So I'm um, putting it onto a wire. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments. There's no maker's mark on them. And they've got these really sharp looking teeth on the clips there. So I'm not sure how comfortable that they would be, but they're gorgeous. I think this is all from the same lady. I just picked up a few bits. Um, a faux cameo pendant. I'm going to use that as a focal on a beaded necklace. I just thought that would be fun. And this triple hand enamel pendant which I will probably turn into two pendants, perhaps. I'll have a play with that. Um, again, that one might be on a beaded necklace. Then I came across a lady that had some X shop stock and she just got these gold plated chains. I think I paid a pound each for those um, just to reuse some of the pendants that I've got that need going onto chains. This pendant, which uh, I can't remember what it's called now, 1632, is it? You might have seen in a previous video, I had a gold one very similar that was broken. Um, I think that was a brooch and I turned it into a pendant. This one is a vintage pendant, so that just needs to go onto a new chain. And that's good to go. These pieces here, nothing was more than 50p, I don't think, in this tray. This one is a Lynx of London Puff Heart. I suspect it was probably on a key ring. I don't think that it's silver. Um, and I was thinking again, I'll turn that one into a pendant. This sweet little duck ring. I think, I think it was something like 20p an item. The bits I bought from this lady, they were very cheap. And a very sort of plating lost bracelet with charms on I just thought that they would make fun summer earrings but I haven't managed to make them in time for this summer so that, that will maybe go away for upcycling next summer but I thought they'd make cute earrings so that's that little haul um then these are from earlier in the summer you might have seen this in my shorts these are brass bangles and these were really badly tarnished and they've cleaned up beautifully they're absolutely shining gold i'm so pleased with them and i've added them to a few others that i've got um, as um, i've been wearing them as a stack with summer dresses and things i think they're absolutely gorgeous brass is really underrated i think as long as you keep it shiny like this it's stunning so these were two pounds for the five so i was pleased with those this little Paddington brooch I picked up on a stool and then put back down. And then later on, as I was coming back around the car boot sale, the seller had gone and left some things on um, just a piece of cardboard and said, free, take it. So I decided I would rescue him. I think it is Paddington, but obviously not, not an official one. Now, I do have a fail. I'm lucky that I don't get these very often, but I picked up this Russian wedding, wedding band. Uh, for three pounds, the seller wasn't sure if it was silver or not. There was no markings on it, but it's quite heavy. So I thought I would take a chance because it had black tarnish on it. But as you can probably see, when I got it home and cleaned the tarnish, it went to copper. So it's silver plated over copper. Um, unfortunately, copper and silver both tarnished to black. So it wasn't until I cleaned it that I could see it was copper. Um, but one of the reasons I wouldn't normally, never normally pay three pounds at a car boot sale for a ring that I wasn't sure was silver. But if you, um, when I tried it on, it was really nice and comfy on my finger. And then I must have turned one of the rings the wrong way around and tried it on a second time. And as you can see, that makes the ring smaller and it got stuck on my finger. And my finger had started to swell and I was panicking. So I ended up paying 
three pounds for this non-silver ring so as i say i'm very lucky in that i don't get a car boot sale fail very often but this one unfortunately was i've still been wearing it because i quite like the mixed metal look but there we go that was overpriced so to make up for it on another stool i got this really pretty sterling silver and i think they keep it zirconia's sort of fern ring isn't that lovely? That's one of this Mark 925. Uh, these chilli pepper earrings, which the lady had bought from a chilli festival. They're glass chilies. They were £1.50. I think they're super fun. Those can easily go onto new hooks and somebody else will enjoy them. Some cloisonne enamel earrings. These were 50p. I'm interested to hear, let me know in the comments whether you say cloisonne or cloisonne or something different because I hear lots of different YouTubers using different pronunciations and I'm, I've only ever seen the word written down before so I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly but anyway I thought those were really pretty. Then I got this little silver bracelet, it's sterling silver with a little bit of turquoise and glass stones, uh, glass beads rather, and that was 50p. That's a cute little one. Then there was a stall that had just arrived and the lady put out a carrier bag of jewellery and honestly the dealers swooped on it and I waited patiently and then I got elbowed out of the way by somebody else when I finally got to the bag. <laughs> so I may have missed some goodies in here, but I did pick up a few bits. Um, what did I get from him, uh, from her? Just trying to remember now. That one. Yes, all of these bits. So we have a silver ring, which I'm going to have to test because I, it does have a 925, but I think it might be plated. So that could be another fail. I'll have to look into that one. This little piece, which is marked 925, and I thought it came with this necklace. It looks so similar, but it doesn't because this isn't sterling silver. But I think I might attach those together and make it into a, a focal piece for the necklace. So that's those ones. These silver earrings, those will just go onto new hooks. And these ones which go with that ring, which are also Mark 925. So I'll have to check those as well if that ring is not silver. And then this interesting little bead, which looks like it could well be tarnished silver. So again, I'll need to test that one and maybe I'll make it into a little pendant or something. And then on the last stall I went to, it was a house clearance guy and I was looking at the jewellery and he said, oh, I've got a suitcase full of jewellery here that I haven't opened out yet. So I got first eyes on it and it was mostly rubbish, gold plated, cheap, very cheap costume jewellery. But I did find one thing in there, which I will show you. So I was slightly excited by the exciting things thing that I found and I probably overpaid on the other bits, but it evens out. So this is um, a sort of uh, 80s style earring and my plan was to make this into a pendant but it's got some green verdigris on it so I'm not sure what I would do with that. I'll see if I can clean it off. These are just costume but I thought they would be so fun. We're not that far from Halloween now and they can easily be put onto new hooks. This one which is just again costume but it's a cute little charm bracelet and I just thought this dog was really sweet. I don't know, something about him called out to me. So that would either be sold as is or I might use the dog charms for something else. And then this one. So this is a rather unassuming bog standard silver plated vintage chain. I've seen that one lots of times before. But this little sparkler has a 9K marking on the back. I have tested it, it's not a diamond, it's a cubic zirconia, but not bad for a little piece of nine carats. I paid four pounds for those four pieces, so a pound for a nine carat gold pendant, and that was my treasure of that day. So that one I'm gonna put onto a nine carat chain. 
Then I've got a few charity shop pieces to show you. So I'm really into my brass bangles and my local cancer research store had lots of brass bangles and I picked up a couple to go with my stack. But I discovered this one, which I believe is copper and it's by Moda, which is um, a Maltese designer brand mid-century. It says Moda Handmade on there. And this is going to look absolutely stunning, cleaned up. I'll do you a short and show you what it looks like when it's all clean. That was two pounds, which was a bit of a bargain for that one. I picked up this one for my stack for one pound fifty. That needs a clean again. Um, if you drop me a subscribe if you haven't before, I'll be doing a video on how to clean your brass bangles. This one was fifty p. Again, it's brass and it's inlaid with something, maybe shell. Something that's been dyed. I think it's probably shell. This one I also thought I might layer with my brass bangles, but I haven't decided quite yet. I think it's bone. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I thought it was wood to begin with. But it doesn't feel like wood. It feels plasticky. And if you look at the inside there and the outside patterning on it, I think it might be bone. That was £1.50. Uh, another 50p one. I just picked this one up because I have the exact one in green and I just thought they'd be nice worn together. I am enough, which I thought was a nice sentiment. I'm going to make this one into a necklace, I think. So again, keep an eye out on my shorts for that transformation. This was probably my favourite of the bangles for myself. It's brass again. This was really dark and I've polished it to this beautiful gold. It's sadly missing one of its little things, but I have an idea with that. Um, I went back the following week and I found this little lady. I'm not sure if she is brass or if she's just a plated base metal. She's a little bit green, so I need to give her a clean. But my idea is to hang her off there. And then that will make a really unique looking bangle. So again, I'll do a short on that one as well. And then one more. This is copper and brass twisted together. It's a really small size, which is good for me. I have tiny wrists and I thought that would be another one, fun one to clean up. Uh, this one came from a different shop. This is a, just an accessorised charm bracelet. But I love to make earrings out of the charms, so I'll pair those up and they'll make fun earrings. That was £2.50. OK, back to the car boot sales. So I went a couple of weeks ago and I only found one thing, which was this really pretty leaf. And this can be worn either as a pendant or as a brooch. So I thought that would be really lovely for the autumn. That was a pound. Then there was a lady that had a load of Monsoon and Accessorize X stock, so all brand new, and the jewellery was a pound each. So I picked up these sterling silver and turquoise or possibly howlite earrings. They just need a good polish. Another charm bracelet for making earrings. That's a travel one. I've had a very similar one before and the earrings sold really quickly. So that's what I'm going to do with those ones. This really cute little bee, which again was new on its card. Yes, I think that was it from her. And then I found a lady that had a nice box of vintage jewellery. And I got very excited because I found a Michaela Frey enamel bangle. And I have a really nice collection of these. I always pick these up. I've been doing that since way before having the business. Uh, signed inside. Okay, the fray made in Austria. It's just a really pretty colour. Love that one. Yeah, that one was 50p. And then my little four-year-old really fell in love with this hair slide, which I've had the bangle in this design before. This is alpaca silver from Mexico and it's inlaid with shell. Really pretty. So I'm going to clean that up for her. A vintage plastic necklace. This is a bit dirty than I realised. I think I have my sunglasses on. Um, but that just needs a good clean up. And then that's in good wearable vintage condition. Check out this one. 
really pretty roses with turquoise drops. I'm not sure if it's silver in these testing. There's no marks on it. It's very, very tarnished. Um, so I don't want to spoil it if it is plated. If you have any advice in that regard, let me know. I normally just use some soap and water to clean them up. But this one I'm a bit nervous too in case plating comes off. But we'll see. That was 50p as well. And this beaded bracelet, which is nothing really special, but I just like this lamp work bead in the middle there. And I'll probably take that off and put it on my troll beads bracelet. And then this one, which you may have seen in my community posts, which I bought was a lovely long string of vintage beads. Let me focus it in for you. And I've since joining YouTube and discovering other YouTubers talking about jewellery, I've fallen in love with Native American jewellery. And if you haven't seen before, one of the things that the Native Americans make are Nav the, the Navajo tribe make Navajo pearls. And these are silver beads that are handmade. And I think there's two different ways of making them. I'm no expert on this, um, but there are a type of bead that's called bench beads and that's what these look like now i don't think that these are i would love to know more if you know more about the age or where this has come from um, but it has the look and that's why i chose this one i paid a pound for it and i just think it's going to look amazing maybe layered up with some turquoise um, it's light it's not magnetic i haven't tested it for silver i'm not convinced that it is silver I think if she had paid silver prices for it, she would have wanted more than a pound for it, but I don't know where, where she got it from. There's nothing to be given away on the closure there, and it's not a Native American style clasp. So, um, yeah, if you've got any more information on that one, please do shout at me in the comments. I would love to know. So that was last week at the boot sale. Now this morning I went back again and the same lady was there with a different box of jewellery and she said she's got boxes of it so I need to keep an eye out for her every week. I paid £7 for everything that's in the tray. I'll show you individually. Um, I did ask her if she would how if she would give me a price for the box but um i think she thought i was joking <laughs> so maybe i'll try that another week if i go back and she's got loads of great things but yeah i've got some cool things so another enamel bangle it's quite unusual in that the color is on the inside i wonder if perhaps it's perhaps it's worn away I don't know, I've never seen one like this before. I've got quite a lot of uh, vintage enamel bangles and I didn't have one quite like this. It's also oval instead of round. So that was quite an interesting one. This gorgeous string of turquoise, which will look nice with those beads I just showed you. They're not coming across quite the right colour on the camera, but they are a really lovely turquoise colour. I don't know how to tell if they are definitely turquoise they've just been strung onto normal beading wire they do look natural i wonder if maybe she got them from the same place anyway less than a pound and that's a lovely string of chips to wear with the other one check out this bad boy look at that the size of it is huge it's glass no markings on it obviously vintage maybe 60s that will look amazing on somebody's autumn coat another necklace is a little bit similar to the one with the roses on this one sadly is missing a couple of its stones here but i don't think that would really matter in where um, and for the price that i was paying it didn't matter to me this one she said that she had when she was a girl and i'm sort of guessing that might have been in the 60s from her age it needs a really good clean but it's really pretty i've got a blue art deco necklace that's quite similar to this yeah as i say needs a good clean but well worth it for less than a pound a really nice enamel brooch i think that is fish it's a crown with a fish and I think that's the fish brand but shout at me if I'm wrong thought that was really pretty and this one I just picked up because it's so unusual I think they're koalas 
and on the back it says made in Australia and then I think it says arc something design don't know if you can see that let me just focus it in let me know if you've come across that before I haven't looked any of these up because it was only this morning that I picked them up this bangle I thought would go nicely with the brass although it is too big for me it's got the look of gold about it let's see if it's magnetic not magnetic I wondered if it could be plated or a rolled gold but I can't see any markings on it and I can't see any markings but it's very pretty and then this one which is rolled gold it says inside 18 roll gold plated it's got a nice safety on it I just love roll gold um, I've got a few roll gold pieces that they just seem to last so much longer than plated regular plated stuff and again less than a pound you can't go wrong can you and I've just remembered that I also picked up this one in the charities last week sterling silver really cool cuff bangle and that was £10. It was very badly tarnished, but I enjoyed giving it a clean. And I've been enjoying wearing that one. I'm not sure if I showed you this one in the summer. Um, it was definitely on a short. These are tiny little heishi beads made of shell inlaid. And it's in the style of Native American cuffs that are inlaid. But this one's quite crudely done. But I just loved it. I think it was 50p or a pound. If you know anything about this style of cuff, please do let me know. I'm enjoying wearing those together. OK, so that is it for today. As I say, if you're new to the channel, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.